Welcome back, Shaloners. Today, we're gonna to talk about some people we don't normally bring up on this channel, but I think we can learn a lot from anyway. TikTokers, not just any TikTokers, the kids from Hype House. And you know, we're not gonna call them kids because they're full grown adults. At least they are in terms of their baloney and their bullshit and their manipulation. There's been a lot of stuff going down with this like basically crew of creators. Like picture me living in a house with other YouTubers and assigning ourselves an incredibly lame squad name like Hype House. Oh, my sleeve's wet. Like if, if as though we were like on some sort of like whack after school special, like, hey, don't do drugs. It's better to read a book. Like, oh, Hype House. Okay, but some shady stuff has gone down with the kids in Hype House, the full grown adults of Hype House. And we're gonna break it all down. And if you're new to this channel, you're like, okay, what do you do here? We take celeb scandals and stuff that's in the news and we break it down for what we can learn, the psychology behind it and the lessons we can take into our own life. And if you are a full-time Shaliner, you're probably like, okay, I don't care about these people. That's true, nor do I, but I do care about how to spot a con man, how to avoid getting conned, backstabbed or bamboozled by someone you trust. And this situation, the writing's on the wall. It is a textbook example of what not to do. I'll break it all down, but first just wanna remind you guys to follow me on Instagram, at ShallonXO, where I let you vote on the next video topic and give you some daily inspirations. Also find me on TikTok, at ShallonXO, where I give you, again, some daily quotes and inspirations to keep you motivated, keep the positivity going, and to keep fuckboys out of your life, because I am the fuckboy whisperer. They love me. <laughs> Also, if you have a love question of your own or a dating or a friendship or any kind of question, find me on my website, shallonlesser.com and click get help. And be sure to check out my podcast, Girl on Top, out every week, every place podcasts are found. Oh, before we get started, I need your guys' advice on um, hoodie brands. Like th this ain't it. I want something like really thick and really cozy, not Yeezy, like of course not easy, but like something like that, just like big and oversized. I need to feel like a boy is hugging me, if I'm being honest, okay? So anything that looks like it could have belonged to a boy, if perhaps it did belong to a boy that you know and it still smells like that, if you wanna, if you wanna mail it to me, that would be great. Ugh. But I wanna know your brands. Like I love Talentless, I love Mad Happy. So stuff like that. Give me your favorite hoodie, cozy hoodie brands. I'm all ears. So let's talk about these TikTokers. If you're not on TikTok, that's fine. If you don't know who these people are, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. I kind of didn't either. Like I knew of them, but it's like, why would I care? Because I don't need to watch people body roll on the internet in like that, to that degree, to the point that I'm like, I'm gonna follow them. So we're talking about the kids of Hype House. Like I said, lame, whack, after school special name. But when you get a little deeper into who these people are, you're like, but of course. Et voila, I expected nothing different from you. So it all centers around some recent confessions from one of the girls, Daisy Keach. Now Daisy is a an Instagram model. Oh, is that a is that a real thing? That's that's cute. A fitness influencer and a YouTuber. That's a real thing. I can attest to that. So she used to be friends. Or okay, okay, just. <laughs> So she recently released a video talking, like basically spilling all this tea about Hype House. And Hype House was this place that her and some other TikTokers lived for the express purpose of just creating content all the time. Now, as someone who does do this for a living, the idea of that is like interesting. It's sort of like a frat or a sorority house. I'd love to be trapped in a frat house, child. But it's also seeming like, you know, you never stop working. It's like nurses don't live at the hospital. Teachers don't live at school. There's a reason church and state are separate. And Daisy, I think, has learned this the hard way because when you fuse business and friendship, there's a reason the phrase don't mix business and pleasure because shit goes down and it takes you longer to realize you are being used or bamboozled because there is the element of friendship there. And you might be saying, okay, well, I'm probably never gonna live in like a content creator house. No, that's true. But you will have user friends in your life. You will have boyfriends and business associates who are gonna take advantage of you. And baby girl, baby boy, forewarned is forearmed, okay? So all of this kind of revolves around this dude, Thomas Petru. Petru. Who, who gives a shit? And I'm reading like the BuzzFeed synopsis of this. So first of all, Thomas looks like he is 42 years old and a recovering methadone addict. Who, what in the name of bloaty raccoon eyes? Just, this man looks like he's been feasting on garbage for the better part of a decade. 
how old is this person supposed to be? <laughs> Kids 21. <laughs> this can't be right. You guys, he's like fucking Benjamin Button. This dude is aging in the wrong way. He looks horrible. This can't be a 20. My favorite game to play is how old is this person? It's my very favorite game to play. Like, I'm dating a 22-year-old. He look. This dude looks like he's my boyfriend's dad. We're not boyfriend, girlfriend yet, but you know what I mean. It's just <laughs> 21. It looks like he's just been eating hypodermic needles and Tums. You look born divorced. No. Okay. So Daisy met this, you know, middle-aged man, Thomas, while he was part of Jake Paul's content house, Team 10. Now, right here. Right here is lesson number one. You lie with dogs, you rise with fleas. Jake Paul and Logan Paul are psychopaths. I've done videos on them, and like, I don't say that lightly. Like, you're a psychopath. I mean this in a clinical textbook sense. They are hallmark psychopaths and psychopaths don't change and they also have no respect for anyone in their life that they can't use right and i have found that like attracts like psychopaths either attract minions just fawning toadies who are like oh please master like lefou and gaston from beauty and the beast you know or they attract other psychopaths and they form this sort of like you know avengers squad of lunacy and i am after learning what we learn about Thomas going forward, I think it's clear which category he falls into, and it's not the LeFou category. So just the fact that Thomas is friends on purpose, purpose with a garbage person like Jake Paul kind of says it all to me, right? It also says why he's aging so poorly because he's been like touched and anointed by the devil. So Thomas was fired from Team 10. See, psychopaths only want you until there's like nothing they can get from you. And then, so he's out and he took his bloated ass face over to Daisy, who Daisy, and Daisy is, she's very cute. And she's like, she's the, she's the cute girl in high school. Yeah. Yay. She's what we in New York call back home hot, prom queen hot. And she is hot. She's a beautiful girl for sure. Great body. But it's like, what else? You know, L.A., New York, every city is full of hot girls. There are a dime a dozen. And especially in New York, where I live, it's like, that really does not get you very far. Like, okay, you're pretty, so what? Okay, even if you're a model, it's like, you ha you're working on an athletic line. You're doing all of these other things. And it's just like, Daisy, boo, what you, what you doing, girl? Maybe I'm just bitter because she is young and has a banging body and more followers than me. That could, could be it. So Daisy hired Thomas the bloated middle-aged man as her full-time videographer and editor or photographer and they became best friends business and pleasure so eventually thomas starts using his aging dementia riddled brain to come up with the idea of a content house with other tiktokers like chase hudson aka lil huddy there's nothing i hate more than people who give themselves a nickname nothing i hate more than people who give themselves a nickname. it's so cringy stop trying to make bubbles happen caitlin it's not happening. like stop it lil huddy and we're going to talk about how he looks like a vampire from the victorian era in a moment someone named alex warren and another 35 year old looking woman called coover annan i think that's a pastry i've had it in france it's from Brittany. it's known as the world's most buttery pastry so they all hung out they picked a, a content house and they paid a deposit now Chase and Daisy, Chase's little huddy, put down $18,000 each for the deposit. Uh, the rest of these mongrels, Thomas, Alex, and Cover, Cover, put down $5,000 each, okay? So basically, Lil Huddy and Daisy had more skin in the game. They had for, more finances in the game. So things started to get iffy when the New York Times came to the Hype House for an interview. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. The gray lady, what are you doing? And Daisy said Chase and Thomas took credit for founding the Hype House. Imagine, imagine if you wanted to take credit for founding something called Hype House. It's just... And Daisy said that this was like her first big press interaction and she felt like anxious because she didn't have a manager with her. And basically she got steamrolled by the guys, right? And she thought that they would be giving her credit also for helping found Hype House, but that never really happened. And according to Daisy, this became like a recurring theme. Thomas and Chase, lol, hoodie. Just Thomas, Chase, whichever one you are. I will pay you 80% of my salary for the next five years if you change your name to Lil Handjob. How about that? 
it's less lame than Lil Huddy, I promise you. So these two fucking gonorrhea factories kept doing interviews without Daisy and not like giving her any shine or any clout. And she's like, the whole point of us being in here is to help each other, right? No, baby girl, not right. So Daisy claimed that she confronted Thomas about him not crediting her crediting her, but he continued to do it anyway. Then she got a call from her lawyer and manager saying that Chase was saying in articles that he put down all of the money for Hype House. And she's like, oh, and now she has a really good body. Daisy also claimed that Thomas didn't get any of the other Hype House members access to any of the social media. Now, this is a big deal, right? Because what's the point? Like, if he controls it all, he controls all the followers. And so if he decides to kick you out, you are effect effectively like, excommunicated from this business. And again, you're probably like, none of this applies to me. I want you to sit here and think about other times people have taken credit for your work. Group projects at school, group projects in an office. Oh yeah, boo, they don't stop when school ends. They don't stop. Those same people who didn't pull their weight doing the dioramas, they graduate into jobs and they continue the bullshit. They continue it. Or when you have like, just have you ever have you ever lent someone something to wear like a dress or jewelry and they get complimented on it and they're like, thanks. I'm like, thanks. No, the end of that sentence was, thanks, it's actually Shallons. That's the end of that sentence. Like, just little things like that make me crazy. And when I've observed people doing it, I'm like, that's a red flag, and now I see you. Now I see the writing on the wall about who you are. So, this gross bastion of doofuses. So, Daisy also said that the house started to feel like, quote, a fucking dictatorship. She said that other members didn't know what brand deals were coming in and if they were getting paid. So the dudes were like using the clout from Hype House, which she started to make money and she wasn't getting a cut of it. And Thomas had said, oh, the house makes no money, but he buys like a $10,000 cat. They're like free, okay? So she was also saying that um, they were doing things like having photo shoots and she as someone on the lease was like nervous about this because if they mess up the house, like it's her money on the line. So all of this just added up to Thomas saying something bullshitty. He said, allegedly, I'm just more of a businessman and like girls like Daisy, she's just another hot Instagram model with a shelf life. Here's the thing, he's not wrong. We're gonna get back to that. We're gonna get back to that. So feeling like she was gonna be cut out, Daisy wanted to claim her share in the company and filed for the Hype House trademark. Again, imagine fighting over these words. When she confronted Thomas about her percentages, Daisy said that he told her the 18 grand she put down for the house was just a bunch of friends to live together and had nothing to do with the Hype House as a business. What is this, ladies? It starts with a G, gaslighting. Gaslighting is something we talk about a lot here on the channel. And it happens when someone tells you that what you're observing is not correct. And you're like, no, but we, we went in the, no, 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 sh 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 that's not right. You're misremembering. This is all just so we could like bro out and like, I don't know if there was any brand deals to be had. That was like totally an accident. <clears throat> I have emphysema because I'm actually 47. So then Daisy concludes with, she stressed that she only met these people a week before they all moved in and they all put down a huge sum of money so they could have a big enough house with enough rooms and enough space for everyone to make content. She said, we went into this knowing we were going to be in business together. And so all this ended with blocking and unfollowing and all of this bullshit. And she said, this has been a really hard lesson for her on how to handle herself in business. And the end result is Daisy is suing Thomas and Chase for striking deals without her, claiming to be the only founders and exiling her from the hype house. Daisy, I mean this with love, good fucking luck, girl. You kind of don't have a leg to stand on. The case law for stuff like this is so new. Like, what the hell is a content house? Do you think there's been case law that has been escalated up to the Supreme Court to like, for precedence? Anyway, it's not gonna happen. So Daisy's right. She learned a very, very hard lesson for all of this. And I like I feel sorry for her, but I'm also not surprised because there's a few things that she did that were just rookie mistakes. You know, not even rookie mistakes, just mistakes that a lot of us make. So I've come up with a list of ways to avoid getting conned. Because if you, the worst the most vulnerable people are the people who think they're invulnerable. Do you ever watch American Greed? I love that show. It's like my happy place. It's about people being conned and and like white collar crime. And it's 
sometimes the cons are just so obvious you're like bro like you deserve what you get and other times it's like I would have fallen for that. How would how would anyone have known differently? You know, like how would you know? And so I feel like in Daisy's case, it was somewhere in the middle. And there are things that you can do to kind of insulate yourself from this. Oh, but speaking of American greed, one thing that I've noticed is that in so many of the episodes, the victims, like the con victims are doctors or pilots. And I'm like, wait, they're like, ex-military you know like big big powerful people and i'm like and i said to my mom i was like how is it the doctors are getting conned and she's like oh shallon they've got a god complex my mom was a nurse she's been in medicine for a long time and she was also flight attendant so she knows a lot of pilots and she's like they're the easiest marks because they don't think that that anyone can get one over on them they think they're the smartest person in the room always and that makes them so vulnerable for stuff like this they make chronically bad investments and i'm like that is fascinating. My, I'm sorry. If you're new to this channel, you're I futz with my bangs the whole time. I'm so sorry. And that's really interesting. It's people who think they're too smart to get conned that make the best marks because they're then those people also have an element of pride that kicks in. So when they start to realize something or there's like the writing on the wall, they're like, no, 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 no. I see. I hate this hoodie. This is the kind of thing where you get like a drop of water on it. It's like fuck you. We're off to the races. So I think an element of Daisy was like, she became so famous so fast, it's almost like too big to fail. It's like everything in her life seems to have just worked out. She was always pretty, she was always popular, everyone always loved her, and it's almost like inconceivable that someone was gonna just go bad, you know? So let's go over, I think it's five, I think I've got five Five points. To insulate yourself from a con artist, a user friend, a shitty business opportunity, or just a coworker or a group member who's going to take advantage of you. The very first thing you need to do is accept your vulnerability. And this is what Daisy failed to do. This is what Daisy failed to do. Not, we all don't know what we don't know, right? None of us can see around corners, but we have to look at our vulnerability and our weak spot. And one thing I think it was for Daisy is like I said, she had never failed. She had never had someone be mean to her, be disrespectful to her in such a macro level. You look at her and you look at her career traje trajectory and it's like, ah, she was just this little golden angel baby. And so it's like, well, everyone's always gonna like me and people are good because they've always been good to me. One of my professors used to say that to be a celebrity is to live in a polite world. And I've never forgotten that. And really, if you look at the difference between celebrities and normal people, it's politeness. Oh, let me get that for you. Oh, we'll pay for that. Oh, you want an upgrade? You want to cut the line? Of course. You're fame. Of course. Rules don't apply to you and therefore neither to consequences. So that was Daisy's vulnerability. For most of us, our vulnerability is different. It's something that we refer to here on the channel as shadow self. And I've done videos on seduction, how to seduce people, how Meghan Markle seduced Prince Harry, and it comes down to the concept of shadow self. Your shadow self is a part of you that you either don't feel comfortable showing to the rest of the world or you're trying to show and no one's listening to it, right? So Meghan Markle saw that Prince Harry's shadow self was, I'm a big boy on my own and I don't need anyone else. And she pressed on that and she saw him. I see you. I, I see that you're the hardest working one of this family. I see that you're the true leader, not William, not Charles, not that queen it's you and Harry was like okay and this happens to us this happens with boys all the time it's something I call the book versus the reader when when a boy comes along and he sees us my ex-boyfriend saw my business side and most people don't they look at me and I'm like mm, I'm like a Daisy Keach it's like a silly little blonde girl and my boyfriend's he's like you are a coiled viper all the time you are so smart and you are so shrewd and I was like thank you even if that's not always true I want it to be true and so he saw that and he pressed right and so look around your life and look at what your shadow self is is it I'm actually really sweet underneath this spiky exterior I've had to develop because I had to defend my single mom and no one else in the family would or I had to protect my little sister or I grew up poor and I've got a chip on my shoulder about it. Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe it's, hey, everyone keeps taking advantage of me and people need to know that I'm not to be fucked with. 
And when, when someone comes along and they see your shadow self, they are simply reading the book of you, right? When we think about truly a book, like a, a masterpiece, my favorite is The Great Gatsby. I don't, I don't wanna talk to someone who's read it. I wanna read the book. The book is the masterpiece, not the reader. But then these people come along and they are reading your book for the first time or reading it in the way you want it to be read and you're like, oh, you are putty in their hands. And manipulative people know this. Fuck boys. Don't target girls who want a boyfriend. They target girls who need a boyfriend. And there is a very big difference. They look for weaknesses. Like a predator looking at a herd of gazelle, who are they going to pick off? The strong one out in the front? No, they're going for the weak one, limping along in the back, all on its own. And human beings are the same way. And I think Thomas saw that weakness in Daisy. Oh, here she is. She has no one to shape her or guide her. She said herself, she doesn't have management. She doesn't, she doesn't know. And look, given that I do this for a living too, this job is like the Wild West. Every day it's different. Literally every week I'm getting emails from YouTube and from my manager. Hey, this is updated. This has changed. This is a new rule. This is a new thing. This is a new strategy. And it's like, if you don't have someone looking out for you, it's very easy to just kind of get lost in the shuffle. And even if you do have someone looking out for you, it's it's very confusing and it's very isolating. So for someone to come along and be like, I got you, baby girl. You are going to go with them like a lamb to the slaughter. And you have to be aware of that because None of us want to look at our weak spots, right? It feels embarrassing, it feels cringy, and it feels bottomless. Oh my God, like, I want to be taken seriously as a business person. I want people to know how sweet I am. I want people to see me as a winner and not a loser and a product of my environment. But if you can just be aware of that, you become more resilient to manipulation. I've done videos, we did Evil Week here on the channel, and I talked a lot about my very favorite book, speaking of books, The Art of War. The Art of War has inform informed a huge chunk of my personality and how I interact with the world. And one thing that you learn about war is you can't just understand what the enemy possesses in terms of like tanks, horses, artillery. You have to know what you possess and what you don't possess. Okay, we've got tanks, we don't have a navy, so that's where we're vulnerable. If you choose not to look at those things and you march into battle, it's like, I don't know, maybe some bolts will just show up with our name on it. That, it could be. You're gonna get your ass handed to you. So looking at your vulnerabilities is absolutely crucial to insulating yourself to manipulation, whether it's from a friend, a coworker, or a fuckboy, or an army. Number two, be skeptical. There is nothing more antithetical to enthusiasm than skepticism. And Manipulative people, they know, when they see our shadow selves, they know who we are in those weak spots to press on, and they know what we want to hear, right? And so they're going to frame every opportunity as the ultimate opportunity. And ugh, I hate that this phrase is so true, and I have had to learn it the hard way, and my whole goal here on this channel is for you guys to stop learning lessons your own for yourself and learn from my mistakes <laughs> instead. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. There's no such thing as a free lunch. People are gonna be willing to do you favors and they're gonna be willing to help you and teach you, but if something sounds too good to be true, it is. One of you guys, one of you challengers who I talk to a lot uh, via my website, if you want it, she's like, this guy, he wants, and she was trapped in her small town in Texas with super toxic parents, and she's like, this guy in New York who I've talked to online, and he has a big apartment and he says I could stay there for free and he doesn't want anything in return. He's gonna give me money every month. And I'm like, that is a lie. That's a lie. If that's, a, who would do that? Who would give that for nothing? These girls who are sugar babies and it just looks like, oh, you just have to like go out and just hang out with him. They're giving hand jobs. I'm sorry I brought up hand jobs so many times in this video, but when it's appropriate, it's appropriate. Like that's, that's not the way it is. And even, these Instagram models, Instagram models, the vast majority of time are prostitutes or they're sugar babies or they're fucking poor and they're paying photographers to shoot pictures of them. So what you see is not what you get. And you have to be aware of that when someone is offering you something that seems antithetical to logic. And a way to divorce yourself from your own enthusiasm is to write it down, write the narrative down as though it's happening to your best friend, right?
Okay, so Mackenzie got this offer and this guy wants her to move in and blah, 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 blah. And just physically writing it down with a piece of paper helps you get some clarity. And if something like pings up in your mind, like, hmm, hmm, that doesn't sound right. There's no shame in recognizing that something isn't what it seems. There's no shame in something not passing the smell test. There is shame in digging your heels in. I mean, like, no, I know what's going on. I know, no one else can tell me otherwise. What is fueling that is desperation. Pure, uncut, crystallized desperation. The strongest smell in the world, right? Guys know when we're desperate to have a boyfriend and con men know when we're desperate for money, success, clout, guidance, validation, being seen, feeling worthy, they know that and they prey upon it. How do you make yourself invincible to that? You give yourself the thing that you're looking for. You give it to yourself. We talk about confidence a lot here on this channel. And what do I always say about confidence? And like, because when we imprint upon people, usually a fuck boy that like we can't get over, but we also imprint upon con men because we have placed a lot of hopes and dreams in them. And it's like, what if we could give ourselves what we think they're going to give us? And I know what you're saying. It's like, well, I would love to give myself like a 30% return on investment. I would love to give myself the gift of a manager. I don't know what I don't know. So fucking learn. I mean, learn. I have been bamboozled by people in this industry so many times to the point that I'm like, I am the only person I can trust. And maybe other people aren't lying to me necessarily, but they don't have my career in mind the way I have my career in mind. And same with my friendships and my dating relationships. It's like, I have to be that person to give myself the knowledge, whether it's how to edit a video and I can't keep relying on people, or it's dealing with boys. And it's like, I'm looking for this guy to save me and make me feel worthy and make me feel confident and beautiful. I'm going to give that shit to myself. I'm going to do things in my life to create self-esteem. I'm going to volunteer and I'm going to help other people so that, oh, suddenly my value as a person has nothing to do with how much I weigh or who I'm sleeping with or what my grades are or what my income is. I'm delivering meals to needy seniors and they love me and I'm valued because of what I'm giving back. Stuff like that. And then you start to feel more whole. And then something comes along that seems too good to be true. And because you have been doing work in your personal life and you are used to a life of that emotional discipline and not desperation, which desperation is basically laziness. Save me. It's come and save me from myself. It's hitchhiking for a getaway car, right? And when you have been doing that work and saving your own self, this person comes along peddling the bullshit and you're like, hmm, you're offering me too much. This pitch is a little too hard. It's a little too good to be true. And you know what? I don't need 100% saving. I maybe need 20% saving. I need a photographer and a videographer, but I don't need a manager and a friend and someone to look out for me because I've been doing work on my own. And I don't think Daisy was doing that, you know? And I'm not like knocking Daisy for that. Like she's super young. And like, like she said, she's learned all these things the hard way. So recognize that you could get exploited. And this, this is a big thing. We talk, again, we talk a lot about war and war is strategy, right? And when I was in a very warlike situation last year, I had someone stalking me and <clears throat> I, I did what I call a mind map, like a war map in terms of if X happens, if they do this, I react this way. If they show up at my door, I blow their fucking head off with the shotgun I keep in my house. If they harass my followers, I call my lawyer. You know, whatever whatever it was, I, I sat there and I, I got a big piece of paper and I sat there with my friends and we drank wine and we mapped it all out so that when that behavior, if and when that behavior ever happened from that person, I already had a playbook. I already had a map to find myself out of the sticky territory. So before you go into anything, just even if there's not a specific situation presenting you, not a high pass situation, just in terms of your groups of friends, hey, we've got time right now, don't we? We've got time. Sit down and mind map deal breakers. If someone flirts with my boyfriend, I don't care if they say they're drunk, I don't care what's going on, they're out of my life. If someone uses me for something, they're out of my life. Come up with your own war map. And Daisy should have done this. I mean, we all could be doing this of how it would be possible to be exploited. 
right? Okay, I put down this money. They put a huge hole in this wall. I, my deposit goes out the door because I put in 18 grand and they put in five. How am I going to feel if that happens? And to sit and imagine these things is painful and it's icky because it means you have to look at your own weaknesses and vulnerabilities again, right? Goes back to step number one. It also means you have to confront the possibility that maybe you're getting into a situation with a lot more variables than you want. But we have to walk in the light of the truth. We say that all the time here. You got to walk in the light of the truth, whether it's your boyfriend is never going to love you, your friend is using you for your family's lake house, or you're getting into a business arrangement that is predicated on someone else taking advantage of you. And then you take steps against that. Okay, I don't feel comfortable then putting in 18 grand, or if I do, um, everyone has to be on the lease and I want a contract in place that my lawyer is going to draw, blah, 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 blah. And then I can go forward in this because I've mind mapped the possibilities, these like worst case scenarios, and I feel better. I'm a doomsday prepper. And <laughs> I've talked about this before. Like I'm a doomsday prepper. I have, I've, so like this Corona thing is like my Super Bowl. I'm so ready. And part of being a prepper is thinking about things other people don't want to think about, but it makes you wiser and it truly gets you ahead of the pack. And it just, <coughs> it spares you heartache and anxiety when shit hits the fan. I would rather feel stupid for catastrophizing than stupid for not planning. Number four, <coughs> it's not Rona, it's not Rona. Supplement your feelings and your hopes with actual information, you know? This is what we do when we encounter something we're excited about and when it's desperation fueled, whether it's a boy or a friend or a job or a new opportunity, we fill in the gaps, right? People are like scantrons just waiting to be bubbled in. And we always do this with guys. So we'll use guys as the example. Like I get messages from you guys all the time. It's like, we went out twice and we have such a connection and I really like him and I've never felt this way. And now he's ghosting me. And I'm like, what actual data do you have about this person? Two dates? You maybe, maybe spent five hours with him. Let's say six on the outside. Who can't be nice for six hours? Who can't hide their crazy? Who can't hide their manipulative side? Who can't shuck and jive for six hours? Hitler was a delight at parties. That man could charm the pants off people. Hitler. So if Hitler could be nice when it served him, everyone can. And unfortunately in this life, we cannot judge people based on how nice they are. We have to judge them on the flip side. We have to judge them on the red flags that we see. When we see them, we observe them being manipulative. When we see the lying, right? When they lie about something small. Oh, was it raining this morning in Costa Rica? That's a weird thing to lie about. Oh, actually you've been having affairs like for fucking 10 years or whatever. Like it's, we have to see that, but we don't want to because we get excited. And like I said, we fill in the gaps because we're desperate and we want a situation to work so badly. <coughs> we are willing to dial down logic and intuition and dial up fantasy projection, right? Oh, we have one great heart to heart with this guy on a date. <coughs> Surely that means he's capable of a million more. Well, maybe not. Maybe he's a one date kind of dude. Some people, the ceiling and the floor, much closer together than people like us. We're very diverse and dynamic people. Not everyone is. <coughs> so again, your crucial weapon is going to be neutrality. Because when you can take just a fraction of a step back and be like, okay, I'm gonna gather some more information. Why was Thomas fired from Team 10? Yes, Jake Paul and his other goober are nightmare people, but they are shrewd businessmen. And if they saw something in Thomas that was perhaps duplicitous and they didn't want him around, maybe that's a data point I shouldn't ignore. Let me do an audit of his financials. What's his credit score? You know, stuff like that. And it's hard because it seems like a big, I told you so. And, <clears throat> People are going to say, I told you so. We hear it from our parents. We hear it from our friends. And we, we, it affects us so much because it usually pings up our own intuition. I have only ever gotten the angry, the angriest I've ever been about I told you so's are when 
I, I told me so too. And I knew like I knew like I knew something wasn't right. And I denied that. I dialed down because I was desperate. Because I was desperate for an emotional getaway car. Sometimes an actual getaway car. Just, just I really wanted to go on that trip. And I was going to just pretend like this relationship was working. You know? And so if we can, first of all, avoid telling everyone our business all the time so that there are fewer I told you so's, keep things close to the vest. Hustlers move in silence, right? Then we give ourselves the freedom and the elasticity to really do our research about a situation. And remember, fucking I told you so. Fucking I told you so. Who cares? Let people say, it. oh, you told me so. <laughs> Great. Cool. It doesn't matter what anyone else says. It matters what you yourself are learning and how you're growing and how you're protecting yourself from people who don't have your best interest at heart. And all right, let those other little chickens be like, hey, you know, they're not growing and learning. You are. And growth is painful. That's why it's called growing pains. Growth is awkward. And it doesn't happen in moments of comfort. We don't grow in our comfort zone. And there's no comfort in our growth zone, consequently. So if you're having an I told you so moment, lean into it. As painful and cringy and incensing as it is, approach it from neutrality and let the lessons be learned. Because one thing I notice when you guys message me <clears throat> and when you can't get over something and you're caught in this bitterness loop, whether it's a family member, a failed business venture, a relationship, it all, what it all has in common is you're not learning from it. You're not learning from it. He did this. He did that. Yeah, people do things. But what did you learn? Because once you turn something into a lesson, it has a context in your life. It's not just a painful chapter for the sake of being painful and you feel stupid and I'm an asshole and great. My life's in shambles. It's okay. That was a lesson learned. Any fable, any story you read, there's pain and there's hard times and there's chances for that character to be told, I told you so. But therefore, on the other side of that, there's growth. We can't change what happens. We can change what it meant through that little sliver of neutrality, through looking at what our shadow self might be, through stepping back and being like, here's how I'm going to make myself as emotionally bulletproof as I possibly can so that when I go into a business situation or a relationship or a friendship, it's because I want it, I don't need it, and therefore I am bulletproof to manipulative people and con men. Right? Man, TikTok. Oof. Do you guys like TikTok? I don't know. It's, it's fine. Again, I've seen enough like body rolls to like last me a lifetime. And Drake, the, the audacity of Drake, you know we hate Drake on this channel, of putting out that bullshit song, 2C Slide. We are all trapped in quarantine. Have we not suffered enough? Have we not suffered enough seeing people doing their dumbass dances on TikTok? And now there's another one. Now there's another one. Right foot out. Left foot out. Oh, I hate... I, I'm so triggered. It makes me insane. But speaking of TikTok, follow me on there at ShallonXO. Also hit me up on Instagram at ShallonXO where I let you vote on the next video topic. And like I said, if you have a love question of your own or dating thing, whatever, find me on my website, ShallonLester.com and click get help. Tune in tomorrow. We're doing a video every single day during quarantine. I'm here for you guys. Mwah!